of the Registers Report. My name is John Buckley. This show is about Plymouth County real estate. We're taping this show in April, but we're going to be talking about the March numbers of, of recordings at the Registry of Deeds in Plymouth County. Uh, it's an unusual show for me. It's the first time we've done a remote show, doing this on Zoom with the great help of Mike Simmons from Brockton Cable Access Television. Uh, but let's go right to the numbers. Uh, the month of March was a very strong month in terms of recording, despite all the issues that are going on out there with COVID-19. We recorded 706 deeds, uh, more than the 562 in uh, April, February rather, and we're up 2% for the calendar year of 2020 which is a positive thing. Um, you're gonna see a listing of those sales in a bar chart. You're also gonna see a listing of sales by community from Abington down to Whitman. Every community had its uh, rec recorded sales. Um, and I know the realtors have been working differently than they did in the past, a lot more remotely, for example, our offices are closed to the public. Everything coming in uh, for the most part is over the internet, uh, although we do have some drop boxes at Plymouth and Brockton. Uh, and it's really been a changed um, atmosphere as far as recordings. Um, the big news for the month is our mortgages. People took advantage of the low interest rates and did a lot of refinancing. There were 2,300 and 67 mortgages recorded in March, uh, more than the 1,799 recorded in February, and up 64% compared to last March. So for the first three months in calendar year 2020, we're up 64% with the recording of mortgages. A lot of people have taken advantage of the low interest rates, and saving money. So if you're able to do that and you qualify, I advise you to do that. Uh, next, we're gonna talk about foreclosures. Clearly, uh, foreclosures are something that we're gonna be watching very carefully as we go forward. There's been a freeze on for foreclosure deeds. We'll see how that works out. Uh, in certain cases, people aren't gonna be able to record those against people and a lot of people aren't gonna be able to make their mortgage payments and haven't made them for April and May and hopefully by June we're sorted out, but who knows how fast it's gonna be before people get back to work. We had a very low number of foreclosure deeds in March. Uh, we know that's gonna jump um, and we'll have to deal with it as the reporting of it happens in foreclosure notices also have been very low foreclosure notice is the first document we receive at the registry of deeds that shows someone's in difficulty. Um, above all else, even with these difficult times, I can advise you there are some great organizations out there that free of charge will walk you through these issues. Our neighbor works of Southeastern Massachusetts is one of them. They're a certified Federal Housing Counselor, and before you go to any private help, I advise you to start with them. Uh, you're gonna see a listing of foreclosures by all of our 27 communities. For March, uh, Plymouth and Brockton have always been the highest as of late, and they were in the month of March, and we'll see more numbers coming through, I hate to say that, and hopefully um, we're ready for that. Uh, just news for the month of March. We've been e-recording our documents, as I mentioned. We recorded over 75% of our documents online from March in recorded land, and about 50% uh, through the other side of the registry land court. And that gives people an opportunity to get those to us efficiently. Our staff reviews them the same way assigns them a book and page number, deeming it to be recorded. 
Uh, and it, it certainly is something we're glad we set up uh, for efficiencies before this, but particularly during these troubled times, it's a great asset to have. Um, also, the month of March is Fair Housing Month that HUD celebrates through the re redevelopment authorities. Uh, it's an opportunity to recognize that we in America have rights. Uh, people can't discriminate on land ownership. Uh, it was something that happened primarily during the 1960s uh, when Congress and the president signed documents and the laws that put in place that don't allow people to treat people differently. I can tell you our records are rife with um, mortgages and deeds that were sold that over the years had, you cannot sell them to the Irish or Italian or Italian or blacks or any other ethnic groups uh, that is prohibited now by federal law. And this is HUD celebration this month of Fair Housing Month, something that if you get a chance to read about it in any of the publications, I advise you, it's a great story. Um, we normally have a guest on this segment of the show um, because this is our first time remote um, recording our show. Uh, we're going to try that next month, but for right now, we normally move in and we will today move into a segment on our great history in Plymouth County and in this celebration of the 400th anniversary of Plymouth Colony of Plymouth Colony. The holidays for the month of April are April Fool's Day on the 1st, Holy Thursday the 7th, National Beer Day the 7th, Passover the 9th, Good Friday, Easter, we've gone through. Upcoming holiday at the time of the taping of this show is Patriots Day. We're gonna highlight that a little bit with some of our notable records. And I advise you, as many people are out trying to get outside and get some fresh air and have the time to do that. If you go up to uh, the National um, Minuteman Park up in Lexington and Concord, it's a great place to visit around this time of year for Patriots Day. They have some great walking trails. You can actually walk the trail that the Minutemen chased the British um, after they fought on Lexington Green and came over to Concord Bridge and chased them back to Boston. It's called Battle Road, and it's a great, uh, well-organized, very clean walking trail. It's something you might want to consider during the month of April. And there's a tremendously well-known poem um, by R Ralph Waldo Emerson that he celebrates the Minutemen uh, that fought on Concord Bridge the successful first battle of the Revolutionary War by the rude bridge that arched the flood. And it ends with spirit that made those heroes dear to die and leave their children free, bid time and nature gently spear the shaft we raised to them and thee. And at the site of the Concord Bridge, you'll see a very famous statue um, on the British side of the bridge, the um, easterly side of the bridge, um, where uh, the Minutemen fought off the British. It's a statue by Daniel Chester French. Some people may remember he was the sculptor that sculpted the Abraham Lincoln statue at the Lincoln Memorial but he sculpted a statue, which is a beautiful statue of a Minuteman putting down his plow and picking up his musket uh, and going off to fight um, for the freedom of America. A great um, opportunity to visit that and see that if you can. And of course, um, we always celebrate this time of year uh, for Patriots Day, Deborah Sampson, Deborah Sampson was a woman who grew up in Plimpton. She was one of six children 
and she joined um, the Revolutionary War cause by signing up as a man, Robert Shirtliff. She enlisted in the 4th Massachusetts Regiment, and she went off to fight um, for America, uh, what became America, and she fought for 16 months in battles at West Point in Tarrytown, New York, was wounded three times. She was honorably discharged um, from that service by George Washington in October of 1783. She later married and moved to Sharon, where she had three children. Uh, her likeness adorns the flag of the Plim Plimpton town flag and is a monument in her order, in her honor rather, on the Plimpton town green on Route 58. And um, she is designated the official Massachusetts state heroine. Quite a story. Um, next, I'm going to talk about also with the Revolutionary War. After the war, there were four Revolutionary War soldiers that were granted land to set up a settlement at the Plymouth Kingston Line called the New Guinea, New Guinea Settlement at Potting Ways. It's a very important site in Plymouth County's African, African American heritage. Potting Way Cemetery is there today. It's on the uh, listing of National Register of Historical Places. You can go there and walk around and see the graves of um, Cato Howe, uh, Kwame Quash, Plato Turner, and Prince Goodwin, who set up that settlement. The town of Plymouth granted 94 acres for them to set this settlement up, and it was lived in and occupied by their descendants until 1908. Those individuals, those four soldiers, were transported to the United States uh, from Guinea, Africa via Cape Verde and certainly part of our great history of the Revolutionary War. Um, we always talk about this time of year, the, the Masters Golf Tournament, because of a great individual who was the world's most famous golf writer at the time. This year, however, the 2020 Masters has been postponed until November. Unfortunately, we won't be able to see those beautiful pictures of flowers long before ours bloom here in Massachusetts. Um, and every year on that show, they talk about a piece of that course, Augusta National course, uh, when they do the turn from the 11th, 12th, and 13th holes, a beautiful bridge. It's called Amen Corner. That Amen Corner was named by a person who grew up in Brockton, played golf at Thorny Lee, and went off to become the only golf writer to win the United States Golf Association's um, highest honor, the Bob Jones Award. He wrote for the New Yorker and Sports Illustrated for decades, and he was following Arnold Palmer around the 11th, 12th, and 13th holes in 1958 in his master's victory. And in watching him play those holes, he named his success after a jazz song, Amen Corner. And ever since, every single master's coverage, they mention Herbert Warren Wind and that great story of how he named Amen Corner. Herbert Warren Wind's picture is in the clubhouse at um, the Augusta National Golf Course uh, Clubhouse. Uh, we also have had some great successes at the registry in preparing for the celebration of the 400th anniversary of the arrival of the colonists. In particular, our assistant registry deeds, Tim White has worked on taking some of our tremendous colonial records and telling a story about them with a picture of them. Um, we're showing one of them today. Basically, America's first 
deed. It was in the handwriting of William Bradford, who was the second colonial governor. He arrived on the Mayflower, and when they allotted land for individuals to build their, their buildings on, as they came up a street uh, called the Street at the time, later known as Leiden Street, that led up to what is now the center of Plymouth and assigned the various house lots on them. You can see that was the foundation of the, the uh, recording and pr preservation of property records in America. And in his handwriting, you can see that the original is in our vault in Plymouth. We'll be showing it as we go forward when we're able to celebrate the 400th anniversary of the colony when this all clears and we can move forward with that. But Tim has put together about 13 different documents um, in a display that will be wonderful to see, um, one of which is the decision by the colonists to allow trial by jury in America and relative to land records. One is the 1623 Division of Property Rights that set up private property rights for all of America. We're working with realtors and others uh, being able to show that off again once we clear through all of this COVID-19 um, stay at home place for public safety. I want to thank Mike Simmons from Brockton Cable Access helping me put this show together. Again, it's going to be a little raw. It's my first Zoom cable show. Uh, Lorna Green Baker and Christine Richards for our office who put the images together in the text for me. Uh, so I hope everyone stays safe. Follow the guidelines. Um, make sure you're wearing your mask. Stay six feet from everyone. Stay healthy. And we'll see you next month. Happy Patriots Day.